Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Um, they had a special on ETV last night, an hour special on educational TV, or whatever you call it, public TV. Mm -hmm. And um, it was on Waco. Yeah, and, Wake, uh, Waco, the rules of engagement. Uh, no, that was on HBO. Oh, okay. You're talking about... Our, you're talking about public TV. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, all it was was, inter you know, they were uh, showing the FBI agents talking and playing their tapes, and they sent these milk cartons into the compound to get the milk. No, no, no. The FBI did not do that. The FBI did not want to send them anything. The sheriff, the county sheriff, sent that milk, and before they sent the milk in, the FBI bugged the milk cartons. Yeah, that, they bugged them, but they, I think they had said on there that the FBI had sent it in. No, the FBI did not send it in. That is a bold-faced, bare-ass lie. Okay. The sheriff sent that milk in. Okay. Um, another thing, you know, that the FBI agent on there acknowledged, he said that they knew that the place was a tinderbox. They, they admitted that right on the program. They knew it was a tinderbox. Not only did they know it, but on the morning of the 19th, they notified several hospitals in the area to prepare their units for, for a large quantity of burn victims. Now, that's long before the fire ever started. So they knew they were going to burn these people out. And that's not all. That there were other indications. Okay, well, then, then they played a tape of, uh, that they claimed was David Koresh. And uh, on the tape, it was somebody talking about pouring gasoline on the inside. Now, they claim it was Koresh who said that, and the point that I raised was, well, if, if, that, if he did say that, and they knew the place was a tinderbox, if, if they actually heard him say that. Let me tell you something. We have all of those tapes. We have tapes of David Koresh, and we have put them on a voice spectrum analyzer. It is not David Koresh. I don't know who it is. Okay. But it is clearly someone attempting to imitate David Koresh. Okay. If you put the two voices, uh, voice known voices, known tapes of David Koresh, and this tape on a voice spectrum analyzer, uh, it is not David Koresh. And a voice spectrum analyzer is not ever wrong. Okay, I'm glad to know that because then they lied again. They have lied so many times, it's pathetic. I mean, public broadcasting lied by putting that on that. Well, public broadcasting is not lying. What they're doing is going and interviewing the FBI and taking the evidence that the FBI convinces them is true, and they're airing it. Okay. They're not, I don't believe that they're intentionally lying. Okay. They're trying to present a program, and they go and interview and gather this evidence, and they believe what they're told by the authorities because Americans are trained to believe the authorities. They never question it. PBS did not put these voices on a voice spectrum analyzer. I can guarantee you they didn't do it. Okay. They just accepted what the FBI told them. Mm -hmm. And the FBI and the BATF and just about anybody in any agency of government has been proven over the last 10 years to be the biggest liars that have ever crawled across the face of this earth. Yep. Mm. Well, another interesting thing, and I'll let somebody else get on, was that they did do a film of Koresh on the inside, a video mm -hmm. that, he, that he sent out, they showed it. Yeah. And he didn't, one interesting thing about him is he didn't appear to be the least bit afraid of them. He wasn't. <laughs> you know, I'd never seen him personally before last night. He wasn't. Do you think if they were afraid, they would have put up the fight that they put up? In, in the initial firefight, they beat the, they beat the BATF. The uh, BATF surrendered. They all stood up, put their hands in the air, and backed away from Mount Carmel because they had been so decimated. They could have taken the rest of them out if they wanted to. They could have. The, oh, branch, the, the branch Davidians could have killed every single man and woman there that belonged to the BATF. Yeah, so it sounds to me like they were merciful to them. They were merciful to them. They allowed them to come in and remove their dead and wounded. Uh, and, uh, you know... They kept them covered at all times, but they allowed them to do it. Guess what? After they did that, they asked for medical supplies and milk for the children. Guess what the BATF told them? What did they tell them? No. Uh, no. They told them, no. You know, yeah. Well, 
Yeah. And, and if it hadn't have been for the sheriff, the children would not have had any milk. It was the sheriff that sent that milk in, you lying FBI scum sucking traitors. How dare you take credit for what the sheriff did? I that just makes me so angry. I am just oh man, I'm telling you I hate these liars. I just can't stand them. I am sick of them. Yep. Well, um, yep, I'm, I'm sick of the situation, too. And uh, is it really true that when that um, when the place went up in flames that there were people applauding? I mean, from the AP upper? Yes. There, there were people literally applauding. Not only applauding, but we have videotape of them with their hands in the air bowing to the flames. Bowing to the flames like worshiping. Right while these people were burning like they were some kind of sacrifice to some pagan god. And that might have been exactly what they were. Well, yeah, I agree with you. And I don't, you know, I don't care what people out there believe as long as they're not harming me. You know, they could be real nuts. They could believe that they're God or whatever they want to believe. Who cares? But as long as they're not harming me, I have no business messing with them. That's right. And the government, you know... I remember when we're in Randy Weaver's situation, I was listening on shortwave in the regular media. They wouldn't cover it. They would not give us any news on it. That's right, because they had been told by the authorities that Randy Weaver was a felon who had killed a United States Marshal. It was all a lie. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know what the truth is? The probability is, is that the Marshal was killed by one of the other Marshals. Because of the bullets found in his body, were not the bullet from the boy's deer rifle. Well, what what they do is they, they tell everybody, you know, this man's a white supremacist, and they use that to to justify their actions, and the public accepts that nonsense. I remember when the Waco place burned. That's because the public is stupid. The public, the public better wake up. Because whatever they used against Randy Weaver, whatever they used against me, whatever they used against. Uh, the Branch Davidians, however they brainwash the public to accept the deaths of those people, they can also do it to these stupid, silly idiots out there who fall for this stuff. Yeah, they are. They're morons as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I remember I pretty much I was finished with Rush Limbaugh after that because this man got on the radio and he, he just bashed David Koresh as some kind of freak, some kind of nut. And Rush Limbaugh supported the government's action. I don't know if you heard it. Yes, I heard it. But he did. Yeah. And I pretty much, from that point on, I'm fin finished with Rush Limbaugh. Did I don't listen to the man. I have no interest in listening to the man after that. Did you hear what Paul Harvey did? No, I didn't. During the uh, Randy Weaver debacle, the uh, FBI sent a robot up to the Weaver cabin this robot had a phone on it. And uh, Paul Harvey, during his broadcast, was telling Randy Weaver to reach out the window and pick up the phone. And he kept telling Randy Weaver to do this, that there's a robot out there. It's not a person. There's no weapons. There's nobody going to shoot you, anything like that. Reach out and pick up the phone. What Paul Harvey didn't know is he was being used. On this robot, built into this robot, was a shotgun. Oh, wow. If Randy Weaver had reached out and picked up that phone, that shotgun would have blown his arm off. And they used Paul Harvey. They used Paul Harvey yeah. to try to get him to do that. Fortunately, Randy Weaver was not that stupid, and he did not do it. And yeah. so that attempt failed. This, yeah. all, this all came out in the trial. It's in the trial transcript. It's in the uh, defense of Randy Weaver, which I read all of these documents over the air. Over the air, I read them, and it's all documented in there. And then after it was all over, Randy Weaver was found not guilty of any of the crimes that he had been accused of. Yeah, but I wouldn't care, even if the man was a white supremacist, and I'm not saying he is, but even if he was... It doesn't matter, as long as he's... not he, hurting somebody. That's right. They have no business messing with the man. Ah, but you see, in the future New World Order, that's a thought crime. And there won't just be crimes against your neighbor or against your neighbor's property. There will be thought crimes. In fact, today's there's thought crimes. That's what they tried to, to demonize him with. That's how they demonized the Branch Davidians. And the Americans buy it. The stupid sheeple buy it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let 
somebody else get on. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for calling. You know what? When I first began this program, I used to get the stupidest calls you ever heard in your life. And over the years, they got better and better, but they're better now than they've ever, ever been, which tells me that there's a great awakening occurring. I just hope it's not too late. 